Happy Halloween, everyone, and welcome to a very special YouTube exclusive of the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. And we wanted to bring back, because we did it last year and it was such a success, our horror resident expert, David Mercer. David, welcome back to the show. I'm so happy you've taken time out of your day to sit down and talk about the horror franchise, but not of movies, of television. Exactly, exactly. Not of movies, not of books, but of television. So, so it's it's an amazing genre. I mean, when I when when I when I thought about you know this and, and talked to you about it, I was like, oh, it'll be kind of cool. Look up all the old TV shows and new TV shows. You know, I, I'm not going to learn anything because you know I know everything in the world. But one of the the most interesting things I found out was like the old one of the old TV shows was Dark Shadows, mm -hmm. and and. And in seven seasons, guess how many episodes there were without looking at the screen? Because I know you've pulled up the website too. So without looking at the screen, just take a guess. How many, how many episodes in seven seasons? 23. 1,225. What? Yes. Dark Shadows started as a soap opera. So it was on every single day. So wow. you've got a show like that that's soap opera based, and, and it's interesting. I'll put it under my honorable mentions. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna share in the show notes, right? The yep. the, the link to, to my website where all these are, and we'll talk about them. But that was something that that just struck me as is is funny and, and interesting. And then I remembered that it started out as a soap opera, and, and in fact, it was supposed to be for anybody who doesn't know, Dark Shadows came out way way back when. And it started out as a as a soap opera that they were going to have it in a creepy old house, and there was this ma main girl who was in it, and 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 Victoria Winters, I think, and and with, it was supposed to be about her coming to this old house to be a nanny for for a young young boy, and and it was just going to be a creepy house, and then somebody said, well, you know, why don't we make the vampire real? <laughs> this, this instead of it just being a creepy house, and let's make make ghosts real and all this kind of stuff. And it was really an interesting take on it for the time. I mean, these are black and white days. So, so, so very amazing. So, so yeah, so, so, I, so Dave did learn something. You can put that on your wall. <laughs> Check one. He's learned something. So there you go. Learned something today. <laughs> but we are going to, uh, for those who don't remember, last October 31st, uh, David and I sat down. We talked about our favorite horror movies, our favorite scary movies. And we want, like David said, we wanted to sit down and talk about television because often the forgotten john the forgotten outlet of horror uh tv shows or screen things is tv but there have been a large um list of tv shows that have entered into that horror sci-fi whether it be recently with uh the winchesters on the cw or way back and i'm just i i, I just pulled it up so i see it right beside me right now kojak so there have been the cross and the long line, even Dark Shadows, like you mentioned. So horror has been a staple of the television industry. It's just not often remembered because we always remember like Friends and Seinfeld and all those like Cheers and Ally McBeal. We don't ever remember the scary things. We always remember the funny things on TV, right? Exactly. And for me, you know, as we talked about before, I grew up, you know, watching all of these old horror TV shows, the the creature feature with the monster of the week type stuff, and so so for me that was just that was my mind candy and just you know it was great. It's something I watched with my parents and you know other kids might have been watching the happy shows, but for me, it, it, I, I enjoyed the scary shows. Now sometimes I did crawl into bed with them. I'll admit that I was I was scared scared a couple of times and and watching shows too early. But, but but as you mentioned there, Coal Shack, I mean, that was one of my, you know, favorite shows when I was a kid. It was Coal Shack, the Night Stalker. And it's only one season, but 20 episodes. So when you consider She-Hulk that came out recently had, what, six episodes or eight episodes for a season? Eight. This is the equivalent <laughs> of about two and a half or three seasons, right? Um, so so it, 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 it was very, very, it was great in the day. And Why don't you... Finally, Go ahead, continue. Oh, sorry. I was gonna I was gonna interrupt you there for a second, but I was like, I'll I'll wait till he finishes off and then I'll add I'll jump into this this conversation here for a bit. 
but you know me, I'll go forever. So, so, so I'll just, I'll, I'll sum up what I was going to say and we'll, we'll go there. But yeah, Kolshak, you know, it follows uh, Darren McGavin plays Carl Kolshak. And Darren McGavin, in case you didn't recognize him, was from Christmas Story, right? He's, he's the one who yells around. He's the old man. <laughs> Oh, he's the old man, and it's just it's just perfect. But on the show, he's like a, a a newspaper reporter running all around town trying to solve these mysteries. And and of course, some of them are you know vampires, werewolves, and all this good good fun stuff. And you know, to watch it now, the special effects don't hold up. So so don't watch it thinking the special effects are going to hold up, but just watch it for the enjoyment of the acting in it, which is pretty amazing. So. Why don't you think there's more horror slash scary TV shows? Yes, there's been a few that's come out recently, but the, it, it's never been a genre that TV has uh, adapted to correctly. Is it because like the, the thrill of going to the theater or the thrill of reading a book and the jump scare that you get in the theater, whether it be someone jumping out or a chainsaw coming down or a hand coming out of the book, like it just doesn't seem like TV has been ever a safe haven for horror films, whether it be even public television. Yes, we can talk about HBO and AMC and the rise of The Walking Dead, but like it doesn't seem like traditional TV, like NBC, ABC has ever gone into the horror genre. Yeah, and, and I think one of the reasons for it is commercialism, right? You know, it's it's you know, can they can they count on a standard audience for some of these shows? And one of the ones I, I, I cover on here is is the uh, the show Grill, which is 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 sort of you know that was on I believe NBC, and so that was a main network. But again, that was a one off show. Where whereas you're right, they they didn't have a lot of other shows, you know, except for on cable and other outlets. You know, and most of the horror I watched over the years was on you. Know, like like one of those UHF channels, if if you remember those, <laughs> and, and so so for the people who don't know, they were the ones that got kind of fuzzy every now and then when the, when the sun was in an eclipse or whatever. Uh, but those are the ones some, that you had to stand on your TV and do like a exactly. W. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I remember those days. The, the youngest kid in the room holds the antenna up <laughs> out the and, window uh, while it's raining. It's all good. <laughs> you know, there's no lightning exactly. Uh, but yeah, no, I think it has to do with 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 the commercialism of it. Uh, I think recently, though, with a lot of channels, if you want to call them that, being on cable and other networks, I think they've become more popular, and I think they've figured out that there's a market for them, and that they can show a little more violence or a little more suspense, whereas originally, you know, he didn't have that many shows that were getting that, you know, it was a lot of pop pop, pop stuff, right? You know, how many NYPD Blues have we had, or... or or if you want to think of, of those types of shows, while they were a good show at the time, it was one where it's more drama oriented. So unfortunately, they watered down a lot of these horror shows, at, you know, to make it like a drama show. Like if you, if you want to talk about some of the ones on the CW, <laughs> we can go there. We but, will. Uh, but I, but, before we ca- go into some of our favorites and some of the honorable mentions and some of the wah, wah, wah. <laughs> I want to I want to preface this conversation by saying this, by asking this question to you, David, and then I'll add, then I'll answer as well. What do you consider a scary horror TV show? Because your opinion on what a horror show and my opinion might differ. So I want to know from you, and then I'll give you my opinion of what I believe is a horror scream fest uh, TV show. So what's your definition or description of one? For me, it's anything that's more on the supernatural type type genre, right? That that that's number one. So like that show, Stranger Things, great show, nothing nothing bad about it. But that to me is the science fiction. Never seen an that, episode. It's it's not a bad show. First season I, I liked. Second season I got I timed out on a little bit, and I'm gonna watch it again. It's just it's on my list of things to watch, right? Uh, but it's it, it's more sci-fi. Uh, and and shows you know like Vampire Diaries. The reason I don't really count those quite as horror, right? They're vampires. It's more of a drama thing. So I think I put that in the sort of the honorable mention. So for me, it has to have you know the supernatural in it, right? For number one, it has to have some sort of jump factor or even an ick factor where you're like, oh, that's nasty. You know, it's like you know American Horror Story. 
some of the stuff they did was just amazing and very creative. And a show I just thought of that I didn't put on my list was Strain, if you ever saw that, from Guillermo del Toro. It's a vampire show. And they did some amazing things on that show. Uh, it's one where, again, I tapped out towards the end of it. So because you know, a lot of shows jump the shark, as they, as they say, for, for the old Fonzie reference. Uh, but but it's one that for me, you have to have the supernatural. You have to have the jump or ache factor. And you have to have the belief while you're watching the show that it could be real. Right. You know, now we all know it's a TV show and, and all the good fun stuff. But while you're watching the show, I want to I want to think that the characters believe it's real. You know what I mean? Not not something where it's like, you know, just, you know, paper mache. I, that's the only way I can think of to say. It. I, I think you're right a little bit. And I think I would agree on the majority of what you said. The one that I would disagree with, and this is the great thing that we can disagree on these things, is the the idea that it has to be jump scare or the the goo yeah. factor, right? I, I think there's been some shows out there that uh, for me, when I was watching them when I was like 17, 18, or mm -hmm. even younger when I was like 15 or 14, I was thinking, holy crap, this is scary and I'm going to like die a class case of emotions. But we'll talk about a few of them later on. But I think yeah. that's where I think I would dif differ, dif differentiate between the two of us is just, yep. I think it's more of the supernatural, but also I think the acting is the big part, right? Oh. I, I love the jump scare, but yeah, yeah. I, I, I love the storytelling as well, right? Yeah. Like if you oh, can yeah, tell no. me a story from episode one to episode 22 or episode 10, yes. and, it, and it brings me and goes, okay, what the... F is going or what the fuck? Pardon my French. Because we're YouTube exclusive, oh, yeah. so we can swear all we want on this one. Um, not that we didn't before, <laughs> but when <laughs> when 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 the storyline when the story is cohesive and it tells a story that makes me want to go back and go, okay, I think I figured this out. I think I know who the bad guy is or how the bad guy is related to this person. Not saying that it's like CSI Miami shit like that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I want the supernatural thriller part yes. of it, but I want the storyline to draw me in and the acting, like you said, has to be perfect. And there's so many shows, so many shows <laughs> that the acting goes, why is this a show? Why, why are we doing this? I can name a few already off the top of my head. Walking Dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay yeah, yeah. guys okay so i just wanted to preface the the beginning of this conversation with that because i wanted to let people know this is where our minds are going to be looking at this so don't think as as my dogs start barking up a storm this is the great thing about oh, good. live they live. Do, they do that um so i i guess we're going to start with the big question dave david mm. top top show actually let's let's leave the tops to the end what are some okay. honorable mention shows that you go, you know what? I can see where they're going because I want to talk about the best later on, right? I want to bring people in. I want to build that anticipation that people Sorry. want. Like, oh no. Or they can just skip to the end and watch. <laughs> we'll give, away, we'll <laughs> yeah. give away our Christmas presents at the very beginning, right? <laughs> exactly. So let's not give away the Christmas presents. Let's talk about some of the honorable mentions that you grew up with or you, you've watched and you go, oh, okay, I can see what they've done, but I, I would recommend it, but don't go in with your hopes held high. Exactly for 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 giant horror, and yeah. one of the other things that that you mentioned a little more than I did, but 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 it's something that also helps for horror is the suspense, right? You know, I remember some of the old horror TV shows I watched, like one of the honorable mentions is Twilight Zone, right? Been on for lots of years, have been several remakes, and some of those old Twilight Zones, you don't know until the very end what what the hook is of this right some of them were sci-fi but some of them were, were, were i would classify as horror uh and and you don't know the fact that that the the people in the in the uh in the uh spaceship had got to a planet where everybody was a giant and there you, know, you, you don't know what's going on or the fact that the guy's already dead and he's you know talking to somebody you know you don't know those things so so the suspense of what's going on helps when it comes to horror uh Honorable mentions, one I'd already mentioned was Dark Shadows. It's That's one where it takes a long time for them to tell the story because it is a soap opera. But it's something that for me, 
you know, with having 1,200 episodes you can watch, if you just want to have something playing on your television, you know, 24 hours a day, it's 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 a fun watch. There's nothing that that's bad. Uh, Twilight Zone, Tales from the Crypt. I mean, I remember some of those shows from when I was a kid. That was like, whoa, that just got me. And 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 again, they they were some of them were made for TV, so they weren't as 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 you know, they couldn't go as far, right? Uh, Vampire Diaries and Walking Dead, technically horrors, right? But but they're more you know more pop, right? It's it's you know, and especially with Walking Dead, the zombies aren't really the problem anymore. It's the humans, right? So 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 I tapped out you know like season four or five on that one, and 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 again, and again I didn't cover that you know is is one of my top ones because it's it's not. There's better shows. Uh, <laughs> and another the last the last one that that I like is a TV show. Uh, it's Ash versus Evil Dead. Okay, if, if you like the <laughs> Evil Dead franchise, you have to watch at least the first couple episodes of Ash versus Evil Dead, just for the nostalgia factor of, of seeing that the Bruce Campbell, I think it is, you know, is the actor just putting on the old gear again. It's just fun. It's mind candy, but it's not one that I would say, you know, recommend as one of my top horror. TV shows to watch, right? It's 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 it's, it's again it's mind candy, which is fun, but not you know not something if you're serious into horror. I, I think this is the great thing about being a Canadian versus being an American. The like we had so many shows on YTV, which is a young t- uh, television channel up in Canada, which m- merged into something else. I forget what it's called now, but a Cartoon Network or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but I, I'm I'm not sure if you remember. Do you remember the books Goosebumps? Like yes. the R.L. Stein Goosebumps. So in Canada, I'm not sure if they had it down in the States. I'm assuming because it's a Canadian, it's an American uh, author. They had a Goosebumps TV show. And this oh, is my wow. honorable mem- mention because I nice. read those books religiously. And those were yes. some of the scariest books because when I read them, they were scary to me when I was like six and seven. And when I when they were put on TV, I was like, oh my God, this is real life now because I'm seeing what I read. So though that was an honorable mention because 30, 30 minute interview, like it was like a I think it was a 102 page novel or a chapter book wow. that you picked up at yep. Scholastic Books. And it was like a 30 minute uh, TV show, just basically what they did. And they went through and they made every single book I, th- I think they made every single book wow, it might have that's awesome. one or two and it was the scariest thing but it was one of those things that you look back and go wow this is horribly bad <laughs> Like, you know, you know, when like you're like the 90s horror, like, okay, we're going to try and scare them with paper mache. Like, that was what it was. But for a kid my age, I was like, oh, my God, this is real. This is this is actually happening. Oh, my God. I I can see the uh, puppet. I can see it's slappy. Oh, slappy was weird. But then they (laughs) then they remade it into a movie. And I was just like, nope, 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 nope. So (laughs) that's one of my honorable mentions. The other honorable mention is it goes in the same lines it was on ytv and this is this is the honorable mentions that i usually do is the going back to my old days is are you afraid of the dark i'm not sure if you know the uh, the woman uh, the actress alicia cuthbert she played on 24 she was okay. Kiefer sutherland's daughter on 24 she okay, was yes, also in the door girl next door she got her start in that show and then she went on to popular mechanics for kids and are you afraid of the darks is just like kids sitting around a fireplace and then telling horror stories and like then they would like reimagine the stories as it was happening and it was one of the weirdest things that i always watched but yet again looking back i go "Eh, okay maybe not the best graphics and cgi like oh look it's blood totally blood <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was talking to somebody one day and they were t- saying what the blood was made out of and a lot of it it's like yeah it's, it's ketchup and sugar water right basically and and but if, if you want to go to you know some of the you know what, what got me like in in movies how alfred hitchcock and, and then were able to do things that they did and like the movie Psycho, you know, you're seeing the the chocolate go around the drain. But when I was a kid, that scared the heck out of me. So some of those shows, you know, Creep Show, etc., were, were just that way. Tales from the Crypt as well. Those were just, you know, for the age that I was at the time I was seeing them, you know, 
Wolfman scared me to death. But uh, yeah, no, that I, I'll have to check out that that uh, that show. Are you afraid of the dark? I'll 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 pull that one up. That'll be that'll be huge. Sorry, I just want to make sure I get the name of this next show correct, and I just want to make sure. So we're just going to take a quick commercial break here. We're just going to come back in a few seconds once I find this one. We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15-second soundbite by becoming a backer of the show. With a quick visit to patreon.com and searching cross-border interviews, you can help continue this show. For as little as $3 a month, your support can ensure we grow and bring new and exciting things to our growing listenership. Click the link in the show notes and back the show today. Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> Glad you stayed with us for that brief 30 second commercial. <laughs> As we were talking about the honorable mentions of some of the shows that we would recommend, but not hey, go out and watch it if you really want to. Um, and I, 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 I remain mind blanked on this one because it was such a limited run. They were expecting to have a season two out this year, but nothing's ever come of it. Nothing has been said about it. And it's been one of those ongoing mysteries of will they or won't they hbo says yes it's going to happen the director says it's yes it's going to happen but it was one of these supernatural thrillers that you got and you got that jump scare and it had a great storyline and it's called the nevers and it is by the uh director of buffy the vampire slayer josh whedon and he is quite honestly probably one of the best storytellers of horror and that jump scare that you might get on a television angle um but it's the nevers um it's it's based in britain it's based on some uh females who have these powers and are able to do things and the society has given them an outcast uh moment but some of the jump scares some of the the storyline is great it's just the the unknown factor of if, if it's coming back or not. That's why I would give it an honorable mention here because I feel like there's so much in the six episodes that have already aired in 2021 that if they don't bring it back, it's such a letdown. And I don't want to build it up to be one of these great things that's like, you should watch this. And then everyone goes, where's episode seven eight nine ten eleven twelve well sorry guys they're not bringing it back after saying it will so it's an honorable mention the nevers hbo has it um, if you're in candy you can stream it on grape so <laughs> nice i uh yeah i on purpose as i went through these these shows you know i made sure to list how many seasons how many episodes because that's something that for me you know i'm very picky about what i watch because i don't have you know, unlimited time, right? I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a bazillionaire. Uh, I didn't buy Twitter, but uh, the uh, why sorry. not, David? Why not? I know. Like, I, I was in a competition. I, I had three dollars. I was like, here's three dollars. Uh, it's a three dollar bill. No, the, uh, uh, but with some of them that that I've liked, where they just had one season, I'm like, that's just depressing. You know, I don't want to get somebody watching a show just to see that hey, there, there was one season two years ago. So maybe they'll do something, but it's, yeah. I, and I that's like why I wanted to throw it in an honorable mention because it was one of those shows Perfect. that I watch it. I watched it. I went, okay, this is a great horror film or a horror show. Sure. And it's on HBO. So you got the swearing, you got the blood, you got the guts and all that, but sure. it doesn't stick to that. There is an actual storyline. And I like that about shows that are sort of horror. It's like, okay, we don't want to see someone getting massacred every five seconds like David's books. <laughs> It's true. That's true. <laughs> Some authors do that. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at you. Got a brand new shirt. So yeah, yeah. we've talked about some honorable mentions. I want to then talk about the big crux of this interview. And that yeah, is the, the favorites. The favorites. So we're going to go rotation back and forth here and we'll, we'll dissect some of them. We'll follow up with some of them. But I want to start with you. So if you had to say your top favorite, your top show, because you have listed a lot and we won't have enough time to get to all of them. So we'll try and do like top three for each because we, we, we want to make sure you guys get to watch all these and you can go to the links afterwards. So David, so top show so we'll go in reverse order so top three shows so the top number three for you like the one that you go okay in the third descending order this is the show that you need to watch 
Okay, so in the third descending order, I would go with The Haunting of Hill House. It's a limited run, so there's only two seasons. There's only 19 episodes, but they finished the story in those. So a couple of my recommendations for shows are just that. They are, hey, there's one season of The Terror, which you know is, 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 is on my list as well, but, but The Haunting of Hill House is, is number one, it's, it's a great book if you've never read that book. Uh, the, the TV show is not based on the book, of course, but, but the, the book is one that Stephen King actually says is, is, is the best horror book ever written, something like that. I don't know the exact quote, but it's pretty amazing. So I went and read it and I was like, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, it, it, it's, it's right there. So the, the, the TV show did a great job on it, The Haunting of Hill House. It's basically, they're, they're going back and forth between a couple of timelines. So if you just, just like that, it's not a good show for you. But if you like that, then, then it's something that it's showing you know what the people are doing now as adults versus what happened to them as a kid and why they left that house, right? That's the whole thing. And, and it's all about the heart of the house and the haunting and all of that. And it's, it's a great show. I, I would highly recommend that as my number third pick. Um, I like, I like shows that actually end, right? They have the best before yes. date. they go, okay, we have a plan for two seasons, whether it be long or short, and this is how we're going to wrap up. I know X, Y, and Z is going to happen. And I like the fact that I can tell there's a storyline. There are some shows that you go, okay, you've been on for 18 seasons. It's time to wrap up that you should have ended <laughs> like seven seasons ago. We'll get to that one a little bit later. Um, but I like the fact that if you have two seasons, if you say, okay, we're only going to do two seasons, I'm not sure if The Haunting on Hill House was uh, canceled or what happened, but they were able to wrap it up, right? They were able to say, okay, this is how we're going to end it. And if we get canceled or we get, we only have two seasons, this is how it's going to end. And it's going to be satisfactory for everyone. Because I've had a lot of shows that go, wow. Yeah, it didn't feel rushed. It, It felt like they... They told the story they wanted to tell, and they were done. And I was like, okay, I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the heck out of it. Like I said, that's definitely a show worth watching. Do you think that there's a lot of shows that do that anymore? Like, when you're oh. telling a horror story, like, there's one there's one uh, show on your list that I would disagree with a little bit. I know it's not a, uh, I know it's an anthology, It's not a continuous season to season to season. And that is American Horror Story. They have eight episodes or 10 episodes per season and they wrap it up in a nice little bow. Later on, another season, they could bring characters back and all that shit. But overall, do you think that is the best way to tell a horror story? Like plan out your uh, attack plan to say, okay, if we have three seasons, this is what's going to happen. We have four seasons. This is what's going to happen. If we have two seasons, this is the trajectory because I find there's so many horror uh, TV shows out there that don't tell a good story after like season two, they, they expected that they were going to wrap up and that was it. And then it goes off the rails. We talked about the walking dead. We talked about the walking dead, how after they got to a prison and I went, I don't get it anymore. This is stupid. Like, why didn't you just stay in the prison? Everyone seemed happy, so why didn't you just stay there? But anyway, and, and, if, and, if, and if you were a comic fan, if you're, you know, if you'd read the comic, you know, some of the characters they brought in later on were so watered down mm-hmm. that they're like, you know, the the Negan guy. Love the actor, can't remember his name for the, for the life Jeffrey of me. Dean, Jeffrey actor. Dean, Jeffrey uh, Dean, yeah. something or other. Yeah, love, love him, and if he wants to produce any of my books, yeah, go for it. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, great, great, great actor. Love, love the guy. But you were supposed to hate that character. Yeah. You were supposed to loathe him. The guy that played the governor. You were supposed to hate them with with a passion. And I'm like going at the time with the governor in the in those episodes. I'm like, you know, I don't know who I hate worse, him or Rick. You know, <laughs> and Rick's supposed to be the guy that's the good guy. <laughs> so, it's yeah, yeah. So I I agree. I I think that. You know, for me, not enough of the shows plan out how they want to end. Um, and and, and so what I've found. What's the storyline around uh, Haunting of Hill House? What, like, is it just a basically like a uh, house is haunted and that's it? Or is there a big underlying tone here? Like, pitch, if I hadn't seen it, which I haven't, how would you pitch this to people? So, so five siblings come, come, in, come, we're introduced to five siblings. And those five siblings had, 
some sort of horrendous event in their past in Hill House. And Hill House is this big, giant, dark mansion. And as they go through the house, they're remembering some of the events from their childhood. And these events are not natural events, but nobody was believing them as a kid. And of course, no, you know, at, as they turn into adults, right, they're forgetting it themselves and they're, they're not even believing it. They're, they've went to, to psychiatrists and psychologists and everything else to say, oh, well, that can't be real. You know, you, you need to forget all of those things when the reality of it was maybe it was real, maybe it wasn't. I'm not going to give a spoiler there, but it's one where, you know, so much of it is, is discounted at the beginning that you're like, hey, you know, we just saw this flashback to this happening it really happened. And it's, and it's one that just, if you like a suspenseful horror show, this is a good one for you. It is, is the way I would, I would think of this one, because it's not, it's not all about the blood and gore. This one's more about the suspense of a haunted house, which I, I like haunted houses. So, so that, that's why I would recommend it. I might just have to watch that this weekend. If it's only 19 nice. episodes. Nice. Yeah, I sold it. I, Yay. I, I, he sold it for me because I'm like, ah, I'm looking for something to scare me this weekend. So let's, which as of airing this, I have well have watched it. So yay, that was an amazing show. That's it. That's it. I like it. I like it. So for my t- my my third place for my top, and this is going to be a little controversial. Yes, I feel like David is already rolling his eyes at the back of his head when I mentioned this show. This show was, it had its highs and its lows, but overall, I will still consider it one of the probably the, the for me, the the greatest storytelling slash horror slash supernatural shows that I probably have seen in a while. And that is from CW from the early 1990, uh, early 1990s, 2000-ish. <laughs> and that is Charmed. Yes, that's right. The story of three witches <laughs> on Charmed. I'm sorry. I had nightmares about Balthazar for time and time again. Yes, the play, uh, the person who played uh, uh, Dr. Doom in Fantastic Fours 1 and 2 yeah. was Balthazar in Charmed. And I still had, I had nightmares after watching that from time to time. The makeup was fantastic. Uh-huh. The storytelling was good up until a point. And that's why I'm saying it's not my top. That's why I'm saying it's top three. But Charmed- well, it, it didn't end well, right? As far, I mean, I don't, oh. know, I don't remember the ending, but it did, it, it like the, the seasons, there's a break and you're like going, okay, these seasons are better than these. Yep. And exactly, right? And there's some shows that I've watched that I go, okay, there's some seasons that should not have existed. And I could yeah. tell you, like, season four through eight shouldn't have existed for Charm, but I will still watch them over and over again. Oh, and I will still get jump scares from time to time because you always forget, right? When you get right. older, you seem to forget things. So <laughs> I would say Charm. Oh, talk about it. <laughs> exactly. I would say Charm for me is probably one of my top three scary supernatural. It did have a good storyline at first, and that's why I'm giving it top three. But it is one of these ones that it introduced so many great uh, monsters. And that's what I always look yes. at is the monster factor, right? Oh, yeah. And for me, the monsters made it, even if it was like monster of the week and it was gone the next week, it was still one of those like, okay, I like you. I snap, snap. I like <laughs> that's that's now, one of my top threes. I, I'm not sure. Do you have an opinion on charm there? there I, I, I do. I do. And it's probably going to surprise you because it's, you know, it meets the criteria for horror. It right? does. So it meets the criteria. There's the other thing for the audience. It's there's a lot of episodes, mm-hmm. so you could watch. I don't remember six or eight seasons or however many of them it was uh, of that. Eight so, seasons. So that's eight seasons. So that's another benefit. Um, yes, there's going to be some seasons that you and, like better than others. And I, I should preface this: this we're talking about the original 1998 yes. charm, not the yes. new one that came out. I didn't watch that one, but this is the one with Holly Marie Combs, Shannon Doherty, and Alyssa Milano, and then Rose McGowan. But we won't talk about yep. her. <laughs> I, I tried to watch the new one. I'll be honest, and I, and it wasn't made for me, which is fine. I'm not in their dem- demographic, age wise, whatever. And and it just it wasn't. It didn't have enough of the old stuff in the first couple episodes and maybe they added that later i don't know but it didn't reference back enough early on for me but again that's 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 just me uh but yeah no as far as the original charmed now was that before or after buffy and was that before or after uh uh vampire diaries 
So it was, it was before Vampire Diaries, but after Buffy. Buffy was the sort of the catalyst of the then oh. WB, right? Because I CW. I put that on my list. I just, to be honest, I forgot. Because Buffy deserves an honorable mention. Sarah, if you're out there, great job. Oh, don't, don't worry. That's I, my number That's my number two. <laughs> oh, no, 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 spoilers. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll wait until we get to that one. But yeah, no, uh, on Charmed, I, I have no complaints of the you know first several seasons as, as far as that goes i i liked that the belthazard guy that that actor i, I liked him julian mcmahon well. yes yes I, I liked him and 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 the the thing that i liked about that show is it was like the sisterhood thing right where they were all looking out for each other it was all about family and family supporting each other and that's something that you know i as i as i write right one of the things i i read recently was in order for a character to show love, you know, in a horror book or something like that, and, and to, to, to show real love, you have to, you know, without making them quote unquote weak, right? You have to give them loss. And they had that in the show. They had the loss of their mother and all of that with their grandmother. So yeah, I could talk about Charmed. Uh, so, but that's well, not even my- that. It's they like bef- before the rise of TMZ, you didn't know the, uh, the behind the scenes issues yeah, that some and they killed off and this is a spoiler if you haven't seen it in 1998 they killed off one of the main characters because there were some con- contractual issues that were going on behind the scenes and one of the sisters ends up dead in the season three finale and everyone's like oh they all all the sisters come back it's always one of those things and then season four comes around and you're like wait what what happened here? Exactly. What's going on here? Where where is she? Why isn't she back? Oh, that's right. They actually killed her off. And it's like, oh, yeah. people can't. Yes, yes, that was a big surprise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I I enjoyed that show. I I, I had no complaints. The monsters were, were great. They had the jump factor a lot of times, had the eight factor a couple of times, but mm-hmm. it was, you know, not not as much. But I think that that show being the more drama oriented show right as far as far as that goes because going out on dates building restaurants and all that good fun stuff i think that served to help kick off shows like uh vampire diaries and others because they were sort of like hey people are going to like this and more people like drama so can we merge drama and horror together and i think some of those shows have done a good job uh, but like i said i i yeah, that, that show i i support that as a good good number two for you or number three number three so i i guess before you go into your number two i'll i'll say my number uh i'll say my number two because we've already mentioned it because someone had to spoil everything and that is buffy the vampire slayer uh this and i just want to make sure i get this right buffy the vampire slayer not the tv not the movie the original movie yes. the tv show from 1997 so it predated charmed by one season one mm. season so Sarah Michelle Geller, Josh Whedon, and it lasted for a very long time, actually, surprisingly, seven seasons, 144 episodes. Um, wow. Again, I guess I, I guess as a gay guy, I guess I was really into chicks in my high school days. So I could really, really enjoy seeing uh, Sarah Michelle Geller running around killing uh, vampires and doing that uh, monster of the week. And again, Josh Whedon being a great storyteller, as I talked about in the Nevers, he did an amazing job on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And this, I thought it was something that was pri- like Buffy the Vampire Slayer was so like before the movie and all that, but no, this is his creation. Buffy the Vampire Slayer is Josh Whedon. Josh Whedon is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. There was no Buffy without Josh. So I would give this an honorable, I would give this a number two spot on me because I think in the grand scheme of things, it is a good, we talked about how Charm had really bad endings for episode season five six seven eight buffy didn't really start going downhill until sarah left in season seven and then it was really weird so i would say the first six seasons were probably the strongest of the the whole series because well josh was the main component behind that so i would say if you haven't go watch Buffy the vampire slayer it is available probably on every streaming platform you could probably find you just type it in it will be there (laughs) You're exactly right, and and Buffy was just a, an amazing show. There was no, I, was a, I go ahead. It was 
I, I think I even remember the ending and it, you know, it was satisfactory. It wasn't bad, right? It was, you know, it, it was, it was one where yes, it had been seven seasons, but the ending was, you know, sat, you know, satisfying. It wasn't perfect, but it was, it was satisfying, which was nice. And uh, I, well, I, we, we are going to talk about it later, but I'm going to throw it in here right now. We talked, oh, I wanted to talk about the wah, wah, wah shows, the yes. spinoff of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Angel. Yes. Wah, wah. Wow. <laughs> I, I wanted to like that show i did too i, I thought and, it was going to be great uh, the first season was awesome and then like wah, wah. Yes. yes yes and and on on the buffy i mean the the spike character is probably my favorite vampire ever I can't think of a, of a vampire character i've seen on a tv show that i liked more than spike and 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 how I felt that you know if if that actor had been a real vampire, that's probably how he would have acted, right? You know, there's scenes where he's like, you know, they're all walking together, and he jumps up on top of a tombstone and jumps off and keeps walking, just just being a you know general fu attitude type type guy. And that was just that was a fun fun show. And like I said, I I I, I like I like that show. No no complaints at all. The the angel, you're exactly right. I think they even brought Spike back on the angel to try to save it, and, and it just didn't. Well, was, because was, Buffy got canceled, and then Angel was still in season four at the time. So season five, they brought in the popular character from Buffy yep. into into Angel, and they're like, "Hey, that should work. That should re- re- boost its ratings." And it still, to this day, Angel has one of the worst endings for any horror films, oh. any horror TV shows ever. Oh yeah. Anyway. Yes, there's no, there's no satisfying ending on that. It's 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 yeah, it, it's it's horrible. Uh, the uh, yeah, it, you mentioned something earlier, and so so tell me in this new technological age we have, where we have this interweb thing, when yep. you're watching a TV show that you really like, and and stuff, you know, between seasons and stuff, or even during the season, do you research or look at the actors or actresses that are in it? I, I stay completely away from all of those. I don't want to know their real life, but that's just me. What I would you? love to say yes. I would love to say I stay away from it, but I have the attention span of a gnat. So <laughs> when I <clears throat> when I see something on t- on the TV, I'm like, I know that person. Who is that person? And then I go, I wonder how much that person made to do this TV show. And then I go, I wonder when this person was born. Who is this person married to? And then by the end of it, I'm researching like Queen Elizabeth for some reason. So, (laughs) or King Charles, sorry. So like my attention span to like not do that is very slim. So I would love to say, oh yeah, in a perfect world, I never research anything, but yeah, I do. I I I I sensual, sens, sensualize the whole media empire of a TV and movies, and it's hard not to for me because I always like to learn, right? And I always try to learn a little bit more. And whenever I'm watching old shows, I'm like, what else have they been in? What else have they been? In? Have I seen that person before? <laughs> I'm like, thank goodness the the some of those some of those other shows, yeah weren't around back then because I, you know, I would have hated to see, you know, oh, and here's such and such, you know, here's Spike outside at the day spa. I haven't, I, I would have just been like, no, I don't want no, to that's not that. Spike. That's just some other random person. Spike has vampire wakes. <laughs> it's an alternate universe. That's what it is. Yeah. So, so okay, before we so go my, into this, before we go into your second, I'm going to take another quick commercial break here because we have some advertisers and we want to make sure we get, we get paid as they say. <laughs> If you're looking for another book after Just Keep Talking, I would highly recommend go and check out some of the great books of Living Death by David Mercer because it will scare the living shit out of you and think to yourself, what's wrong with this author? Is he okay? <laughs> Do we need to have an intervention down in North Carolina? Probably. It's North Carolina, right? Not South Carolina. <laughs> yeah, it is North. Okay. So we'll be right back after this quick commercial break. We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15-second soundbite by becoming a backer of the show. With a quick visit to Patreon.com and searching cross-border interviews, you can help continue this show. For as little as $3 a month, your support can ensure we grow and bring new and exciting things to our growing listenership. Click the link in the show notes and back the show today. Well, 
Welcome back after that quick, uh, quick and great commercial break. Um, David, we were talking about our second, our runner up to our top horse uh, TV shows out there. What is it for you? What is your number two? Well, I, I hate it. I know this is going to 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 disagree with you. So, so I hate to, hate to be that uh, disagreeable. Uh, Omarion. Controversy. <laughs> but since I am, since I am in North Carolina, I'm going to say American Horror Story. Oh. I like, I like the anthology type, and I like the fact that it's this. You know, for several seasons, it's the same actors or actresses playing different characters. I find that type of storytelling very interesting. In fact, one of the old movies I loved was Trilogy of Terror where the same same ladies in it all the way through in different characters and and just the acting of trilogy of terror was amazing and it's still I still jump to this day when I see a little doll like that but but re- regardless of that on American horror story yes there are a couple seasons that I'm like okay I'm not going to watch this I'm done and then I'll watch another season so all of them so I've, actually, I've actually watched all 10 seasons I I've went through all of them now because it was something that I started re-watching it and I got to the seasons I skipped. I'm like, one, well, okay, I'm not going to skip. I'm just going to keep powering through. And yes, a couple of the seasons I didn't like as well. Uh, my favorite season was the hotel season. I don't know if you ever got to that season. That's but the that's one with Lady Gaga, Lady, right? Lady, Lady Gaga. And, yeah, I and didn't I watch it. I, I watched, stopped watching after the first season. Yeah, they do a terrific job in that. But that's my... He said, I enjoy that type of storytelling with the, with the, you know, and the thing that's interesting about it is if you don't like the first season, you may like the second season because it's a different show. It's a different thing going on. It's not the same thing as the other one. So, so that's, that, that was me. I, I would put that as my number two. Uh, and also because there's 103 episodes and 10 seasons. So if you want to binge something, you've got a lot there to go with versus these six episode shows. Yeah. Uh, I will let you have American Horror Story. You can have it. I I keep it so mad. You go for it. Um, I, I I didn't realize. So they have just started season eleven. Uh, yes. Literally on October nineteenth. Um, I I didn't realize there was eleven seasons. To be honest, I thought this show came out like five years ago. No, this came out in twenty eleven. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a new show. I didn't know the new season was out yet. I knew they were going to film one. But so they have Murder House, Asylum, Coven, yep. Freak Show, Hotel, Ranoki, Cult, Apocalypse, nineteen eighty four, and Double Feature. Yes, I liked Apocalypse as well. Apocalypse was interesting. That's you know basically a there's an apocalypse and all the rich people go into their bunkers. Wasn't and, and wasn't Kathy Bates in a few seasons? Yes, she is. She's an amazing actress. I mean, if you've never seen Misery, then you know you're you're missing a movie with Kathy Bates. Watch, watch that movie, Misery. You've seen that, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Based on I, Stephen, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm just saying. I was Which, I was worried about your your horror card there for a second. I was going to take it away from you. <laughs> um. I, I, I will admit I did watch the first season because I it was this new show and which is kind of weird because this show is created and w- written by the guys who do Glee who did Glee Ryan wow. Murphy did Glee and then he went okay we're gonna do American Horror Story and everyone's like what what is this and then <laughs> I watched it and I was like okay I like it Dylan McDermott was in the first season like Connie Burton was in the first season and I liked it it's just then I was like okay. And then I heard it was going into a second season, but it was going to be a different show. Yes. And that's where I think I I kind I, I like the anthology ish, like the anthology idea. It's just when they started saying, okay, this character from this season's coming back for this show. It's like, what? Okay, now you're really confusing me. So now if I watch season 11, I'm going to have to rewatch all 10 seasons to try and remember oh, yeah. who all these people are. Exactly. Well, and, and one of the ones that's an anthology that's not on my top three, but I'm still going to mention it, uh, was The Terror, right? I love, did you see that? It's the one about the ship where they're trying to go through the ice and they, they basically are trying to find a new Northwest Passage. And it's about a ship in the 1800s or something like that. There's two seasons. Well, the first season's about the ship. Amazing. Loved it. 
The second one is about like a pre-World War II thing, you know, so it's totally different characters than the first season. And it's it's like, I just didn't, I didn't like it. They never made a third season. If, if they would, I'd probably try it. But it's one of those where it's like, it's an anthology because it's a set, here's the story from beginning to end in a season. And I kind of like that. But it's one where there's no, the next season, I didn't get into it at all. So, but it's worth watching the first season. I might have to take a certain little gam- gander at that after my surgery in December. What's a great Christmas holiday without a few horror shows thrown your way a few times? <laughs> I, I get the horror from the bills. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? Don't we so all? I think we're up to your, your number. No, one. I'm throwing it over to you. I'm throwing it back oh, over to you. Because I, me. I, oh, I did it back to back for my second, my third and second. So number one. What is your top horror film, horror TV show that you would totally recommend and you can watch over and over again? Because I want to see if it's the same one as mine, because I don't think it is. And I think if it, if it is, then I'd be very surprised. Wow, this, this, this is a lot of pressure here. Uh, if, if, if you told me I could only watch one horror show again, ever, okay? I would choose Supernatural. It's mind candy, and and it's just it's just such a fun, wonderful show. Lots of monsters, and it's one of those things for the monsters themselves. I would research after they'd mentioned certain monsters to see if those were real monsters that I'd heard of, and 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 then I would also critique when they had something like the Wendigo, and I'm going, well, that's not what I heard, and then, then I'd go off and do research, going, oh, I guess that is what's right, you know, and. And, but but that show and of course the follow-on show called the Winchesters you know that you know the Winchesters I would have named that as my top but they're only on episode three and they're doing such a good job it's the prequel to Supernatural but I would say if you told me Dave you can only watch one horror show for the rest of your life I'd have to pick Supernatural yeah okay I, I don't think you'd be surprised at this but I would put that in my top five if we could do five uh, shows I yep. would put supernatural in top five I would crowd put, I would put it low on my top five though like probably in fifth place the only reason I say that is it lost its way I found there was a season that I went okay what's going on here what is going on here and I like the first few seasons. So I'm going to spoil this. So if you don't want the supernatural spoilers, please turn this off for like two minutes. Or I, I'm waving my hands because this is YouTube. So yeah. next time I wave my hands, you can turn the volume back up. But when they introduced God, that's when I got a little freaked out. I was like, okay, what's going on here? I, I, I understand that the whole devil and God thing, the battle and the good versus evil thing, but the first few seasons with like the uh, yellow, yellow eyed demon, like those were the good mm-hmm. seasons, right? Those were the oh, seasons I was like, okay, amazing. this is great storytelling. This is great. And how every season ended with one of them dying and then coming back, I went... Okay, yeah. come on, yeah. people. And, and don't okay. wave your hands yet. But okay. when they when Crowley was no longer on the show, who was who was the crossroads demon, yep. that actor, he's also been in a couple in, in a, a couple of Doctor Who episodes, maybe 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 one episode, I don't remember, but but that actor is such a good actor. I can't remember his name, but he played, you know, a perfect demon of hell. And and when when he was no longer on the show, it lost something for me. But Mark Shepard. Yes, I've got I've got high hopes for the prequel. So, but so you can wave your hands again. No more spoilers. <laughs> no, and I, uh, we're going to keep on this topic here for a few seconds here because their introduction of characters was so unique, right? Because when they introduced Castiel, when they introduced Crawley, you're like, okay, I can see them being around. But they introduced them, and then you went. I want these people to stay around. I want them to stay around for a few seasons. And then when, um, oh my God, what's his name? Oh, I want to say Sam. Uh, Sam, okay. Sam is the, the like the uncle, right? The the sort of the over... No, Bobby was the old... Bobby, guy. Bobby, 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 Bob. Bobby's character, perfect. Yes. When he, like, for those who are watching right now, we're going, why is that person just like, well, <laughs> that's why. Um, 
their their character development in Supernatural was such an amazing oh, ability yeah. to capture, right? The only issue that I found is their storyline went a little wonky for a bit. And then in the last season, when the whole COVID-19 pandemic hit, their yeah. storyline, their storytelling kind of, kind of got a little iffy for me. I sure. liked the ending. I liked how they wrapped it up. Was it my favorite? No, but was it my yeah. in my top? Yes. Yeah, yeah. The ending, I didn't. I didn't like the ending, of course. Uh, but I do like the prequel and how they're doing that. I think they're they're doing a great job on that. Uh, with with me, the thing that was, the, you know, just some of the comments, like the Bobby character, you know, saying, "What are you two idiots doing?" I mean, I've had uncles call me an idiot before. I don't know what it means, but it's not a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so that that's something that, you know, that sort of was was just it was it was fun. And as I said, it it hit all the boxes for me. It had the jump factor sometimes. It had, you know, even a fun factor. I don't know if you saw the episode where he was, he was, you know, channeling a dog and, and started started scratching himself and stuff. Just so fun. And and in and the episode where where they're they're Michael and and, and the uh, devil is getting ready to fight and, and 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 Dean comes riding up in his car playing playing that one song, you know it's like there you go <laughs> this is how you would do it you know Unter Glauben or however it goes <laughs> and I'm like just just fun so but like I said if I just had one that that would be it. I'm gonna wave my hands now. So for those who are tuning in. They- for if, if someone didn't and they're just watching this without any audio or and they just see me waving it's gonna be really awkward um, <laughs> i would say though supernatural has one of the probably lasting legacies that is the cw so if you think of the cws and you think of horror shows you would say supernatural is in probably the top two or three yes buffy the vampire slayer probably started it but supernatural people still love that show people watch that show on a regular basis like there's conventions dedicated to it and the metaverse around supernatural like how they introduced that part of supernatural into supernatural was such fantastic writing so I, I, I'm not going to disagree with you. I'm just going to disagree with you on how high that is on my list. <laughs> nice. So like my final, my top one, and I think this is a show that you and I have talked about a few times over Twitter, and you're thinking, what, what is he talking about right now? What's going on? Oh, my God. I have to remember what we talked about Dance, on Twitter. Dancing oh. with the Stars? No. Yes, Dancing <laughs> with the Stars is my favorite horror show. It's a horror show. show. Every <laughs> time it goes on, I go, what the hell is going on here? No. And how fast can I find the remote? <laughs> yes. My favorite horror story, if a horror TV show as of today, because I love the way they end at season three, which is kind of weird because I just said Supernatural got dinged for introducing the God <laughs> issue. That is Paramount Plus's Evil. I, you notice that's on my list. I, I didn't name it in, in the top ones. And the only reason, to be honest, the only reason I didn't pick it as, as number one is, is, is the fact that there's only 36 episodes, right? Yep. And that, that to me, the, the three seasons, you know, but that, I... Luke which Cage, is weird because you 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 mentioned American Horror Story, which only has ten episode seasons, but oh, Evil has thirty six episodes. <laughs> but American Horror Story has one hundred and three episodes versus. 36. Well, it's only season three, man. But no, no, I know, I know, but no, I, those, I agree with you. Those who don't know what Evil is, Evil was originally on CBS. It was supposed to be a feature length TV show where uh, a woman uh, is sort of a, uh, I forget what her name, I forget the job now, title that I, she had. L- l- let, me, let me do my intro. Okay, a do priest, your intro. A, a priest, a psychologist, and a contractor go into a bar. <laughs> That's, it's, it's not really that, but it's, it's those types of, of people, right? So that, and, they, put, and they are hired by the church, which is in, I believe it's in New York. And they figure out if people are lying about being possessed or not being possessed. And during the shows, there are jump scares. The first season's a little weird because it doesn't have the ability to swear. It doesn't have the ability to show guts and gore like it does on Paramount+. Plus. But right. Evil 
tells a story that I don't think has been able to be told before because it riffs on so much lore of the Christian faith, but it also rips on a lot of things that are going on in today's society. Like we talk, there's one episode where they talk about money laundering. They talk about social media. They talk about um, uh, adults sort of trying to, and I know this, this is really a bad segue into why I like the show, but it, they talk about how like there's older adults who use online platforms to sort of get children to do what they want to do and you go holy fuck this isn't this isn't like scary this is reality and that's why (coughs) put it at my top one yep nope i i i can't fault you on evil it was i went back and forth in my top three it would be number four uh it's it's you know it's it's one of those that's just it's such a good show that that Michael Coulter, the guy who played Luke Cage, is is one yeah. of the main characters. He's a priest in waiting, right? You're trying to be a priest, and for for anybody who's who's wanting to watch the show, basically they are trying to prove or disprove supernatural events slash miracles, right? Something will happen, and and they're they're charged by a member or whatever in the Catholic Church to go out and see if it's real or not. And some of the stuff, you know, you, you mentioned that episode with the kids. I mean, that's real stuff that's going on. And, 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 and while that is a real and horrible topic, it's also a horror genre that you don't see covered by anybody else because they're so afraid of that topic. So this show covering that was just, you know, that was groundbreaking. I don't know if they ever got any, any credit for doing that, but it really was. Uh, so yeah, I love that show, and I love Michael Emerson, the guy who uh, he was in the TV show Person of Interest was one of the shows he was in as well, and then for a, a drama cop sci-fi show, I, I love that. But but he he does such a good job at it. And for those who are Canadian viewers of this episode right now, one of SCTV's living legends, Andrea Martin, is in the show, and her character as a sister nun is probably oh. one of the most hilarious parts of any horror film ever. I'm not giving anything away by saying this because it's been in commercials, but yes. she's able to see demons as well. <laughs> and there's one ep- one scene, and it's so <laughs> hilarious, it's so funny as well, where she goes around killing these demons, but when people are watching her, they're just seeing her in a broom against the floor, and they're going, "What? what's going on here? So... It- it has everything for me. And the one character that I really loved, but I really love to hate, is yeah. Leland Townsend. Uh, yeah. And I just want to make well, sure. And that's Michael Emerson, right? That's Michael Emerson. Yeah, that is Michael Emerson. Yeah, oh, he does such a good job in that. You hate him. You're, you're, you, you, yeah. you, you want to hate him, but I kind of like him. I'm like, I kind of <laughs> really like you. Like, there's so much I could dive into this because there's oh. it's going in such a great like episode, season two was kind of weird and then the beginning of season three was iffy but yes. season three ending was such an amazing ending it, like I'm assuming this is what like having like a shitload of drugs in your body feels like when you're watching yeah. this because at the end of it you just felt like oh <laughs> Like I'm done. Like turn me over. Like I'm done. Like stick a needle in me. I'm like a fork in me. I you can eat me because how like perfect it was. Oh, uh, it, it like I said, yeah. That there's I have no complaints on that show. The 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 nun during the couples counseling episode was one of the funniest episodes I'd ever seen on a horror TV show. And I didn't know that she was from SCTV. So that that explains that completely because she just had perfect timing and and just just like i said the character i just love her i mean that's you know it's you know and when they were interviewing her for like an intervention or something like that just her answers were just just perfect you know it's uh, uh, that that show is is fun to watch uh so i've got to ask as a writer as a writer how much do you sing Alouette Jolly Wet over and over again to try and get some type of uh, chemistry? You need to watch the, the show, people, because that's a joke that only you will get if you watch it. But do, like, it talks my, my go, my go to song 
and, and this is one when my daughter watches this episode, she'll laugh at is uh, when, when I was rocking her as a baby, I didn't know any nursery rhymes. I had no training in nursery rhymes or anything like that. So I used to sing the Gilligan's Island theme song to her. So whenever I'm stressed, whenever I'm just not doing anything, I start humming the Gilligan Islands, Gilligan's Island theme song. So, and, and I have had ginger in one of my stories so far. And I had somebody mention that, thank God I wasn't named after the main character in the show. So, so that's, you know, it's, but yeah so but yeah so evil, i would totally i would totally if we had the like money to actually use the gilligan islands uh theme song uh introduction yeah. to put it over top right now but i'll just sing it so sit right back and hear a tale a tale of a faithful <laughs> <laughs> oh it's just it's 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 awesome i mean it's it's yeah, like I said, and, and what was great about it, she actually wrote a, a, a letter for school on something she remembered about her dad. And that was one of the things she wrote that she remembered. And I'm like, oh, that's, and she says she still sings it to this day. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. You know, uh, but anyway, I have to go back and watch the show. She was never a horror fan, but now she's been watching some horror shows. So I'm, I'm happy about that. Maybe someday she'll read my books, but that's <laughs> got a good time, right? So we are at the hour mark, but I want to end with this here, David, with this final question to you. And it's a good question. We've talked about the honorable mentions. We've talked about the highlights. But what's the one show that you sit back and you think to yourself every time, why the hell did you make this? The show. I would have to say for me, and and this might must make my daughter mad because I think she likes it. Uh, I can't stand any of the spinoffs from Vampire Diaries. Vampire Diaries I can watch, but but they had spinoffs like The Legacy and 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 some other new show or whatever, and I'm just not into them. I just I I, I again it's probably just my demographics don't fit those shows. I but agree it's with like, you. Yeah, I couldn't get never, into class. I've never seen an episode of The Vampire Diaries. I just, I, 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 I think I watched like thirty seconds of it, and I was like, nope, can't do it. But he's a great Batman. The one character he was in the latest Batman. Yeah, the one of the Vampire Brothers. Well, I can't remember his name right now, but he was in the latest Batman movie and did just a great job. As who? Uh, what did, who did he play in Batman? He he played Batman. That was Twilight, dude. <laughs> but wasn't he also in in? Uh, what no, he also no Robert Patterson I Robert was never, Pat- no I, mean, I guess I was wrong sorry okay so he didn't do very good in, in Vampire Diaries then because he wasn't in he it. did really <laughs> shitty in Vampire Diaries if he was supposed to show up but he, he did it is so but yeah I, so sorry I, about that sorry about that people I'm not an, I, I'm gonna lose my horror card uh, I, but yeah, I'm, gonna, so- I'm gonna jump on your same bandwagon here but I'm gonna go back to HBO here for mine because I I, I watched this show. I watched this, I think I watched the first three seasons of the show, and I thought to myself, what the hell is going on with people if this is passing as horror slash entertainment? And that is true blood. Yes. Like, what the hell were people, and don't get me wrong, Anna Paquin's a good actress. I think she's probably a good person. She was amazing as Rogue in X-Men. But I watched this, and then, like, there were fairies, there were vampires, there were werewolves. I was like, what's going on here, people? So if 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 there's one thing people could take away from this episode is watch Supernatural, watch Evil, just don't watch anything with just vampires in it because it makes no sense, people. <laughs> yeah, because they, they end up having to have something else in it. Oh, we've got vampires, but we need to have werewolves because that's going to be more scary, yeah. Uh, well, because then they could fight each other, and then that's the storyline that we could run for like at least two, three seasons. Well, yeah, let's don't talk about glowing vampires, right? Shiny vampires on Twilight. That, that, that I blocked that out of my psyche. But uh, True Blood, I am reading the books by Charlene Harris. They're <laughs> they're basically they are teen novels, is what they are, and that's what the the show was. So depending on your demographic, you, you may enjoy it. Uh, in my opinion, you know, it was seven seasons of True Blood. It should have ended at four. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, maybe the fourth season, you know, before they got into some of the other stuff. But that's just me. I think you're right. I think there's 
we talk about Vampire Diaries, we talk about True Blood, we talk, uh, and like, there's a few other ones that I could totally yeah. mention right now. There are shows out there that you need to have a storyline, right? You can't just put out content just for the sake of putting out content. You have to have a storyline. And for this, sh- the, for the show, like, a True Blood, like, you could have done it in three seasons and could have gotten a bigger impact like we talked about the house on the haunted hill or uh at the beginning 19 episodes and it worked right 19 episodes there was a flow you could tell what the story was there was a achievable ending sometimes people just assume that just because they have the viewership they need to continue it you don't you yeah, don't you know, and there's talk about bringing it back again i'm like oh please what? don't what? Uh, yeah, yeah what? There's, there's talk. I don't know what. I don't know if it's a prequel or post school or who knows. The basically the actors haven't done anything else, so they're all probably saying, "Hey, let's do it again." Uh, Everything's a reboot that? now. Everything's a fucking reboot right now. So why not? Pardon my French for those who are listening. Can I mention one more real quick? That, Go for it. Just real quick, real quick. Todd in the Book of Pure Evil. Have you seen it? No. Okay. It it it's on like you know horror TV or one of those. Just look for it. But it's basically a high school thing where this kid finds this book of pure evil and it makes evil stuff happen. And it's just, it's as much comedy as it is horror. So it's hard to put in there. But it's one of those that's sort of what they call, I, I would classify this one as my cult classic edition. So so definitely check out Todd and the book of pure evil. <laughs> you're not going to learn anything on this show. You're not going to, you're not going to have a life changing event. But you're going to watch, and it's, it's about a stoner. The kid's a stoner, too, that finds the book of pure evil. So he's a stoner metalhead, and it's just too, it's it's a fun show to watch. The problem with it is they did end it after two seasons, so only 26 episodes. And, you know, you have to take that into account, but if, it's worth a watch. Well, well, I will certainly try to watch that this month as well. But, nice. David... Thank you so much for doing this. This has been fun. Thank you. I have always have a pleasure when you're on the show to talk about horror. I I, I just have to keep saying that because I, I watched the show Whose Line Is It Anyway with Colin Mockery and Ryan Styles, and in one of the bloopers, where Colin Mockery says horror that way, and ever since then I've always said it that way. So horror <laughs> is perfect. We ought to do a comedy episode some year, some sometime, sure. maybe next year. Let's we'll do it in comedy. December. Let's do. We 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 said we were going to do a winter one in December. Let's do it in December. Let's, Let's do, do a winter one. Because who's line is it anyway? I'd love to know your thoughts of the original when it was in Britain. Yeah. Versus uh, Drew Drew Carey, not Drew Barrymore. Yeah, Drew versus, Carey, and then Alicia uh, Tyler. Aisha. Aisha, Aisha Taylor. Tyler. Taylor. Tyler. Tyler. Yeah. Yeah. I, I forget the. I, I, exactly I love to. Happened. Let's do it. Oh, but that that we could we could do that as the one because if we could get where we could play like five second clips of some of those things, it would be hilarious. As long as you don't do it over ten seconds, YouTube will allow it. <laughs> there we go. So we we will do that. Uh, I'll, I'll look at getting some because because those uh, those that show as well as other shows, I I would love to get your opinion. We'll, we'll do an episode on comedies, uh, and and with a with a a twist on Christmas, maybe maybe we'll come there up you with go. you know. So, so that way, our listeners don't always assume that we're always some scary assholes. <laughs> and and, and it, it, people look at me strangely. So 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 on me, real quick, if you don't mind, I did finish my first Keep in the Light Volume One. So please check that out. It's all three of the novellas all together, you know. And 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 I, I'm enjoying that. And I'm currently working on a serial killer novel with an interesting twist in that it's a female serial killer, which thank, thankfully in life, we haven't had that many of them, but it's one that uh, I'm going to make it so that you hate yourself for liking this character by the end of the book. And that, that's my goal. And my, my other thing is I'm, I'm recommending to family and friends not to read it because you may hate me by the end of the, <laughs> the story. So that one's not out, but I'm working on it. So I appreciate, appreciate being on your show. Uh, as I said, I do. Uh, there's another book by some other guy here. What's uh, Christopher W. Brown? Please check that out. Just keep talking. I, I've heard good things about that book. I've heard really good things about that book. 
Yeah, I, I have as well. I like it because there's words and you can read them if you can read. So, so, and a pretty microphone. I, no. <laughs> I heard that there's a lot of, like the, the font is really big. So those who have a hard time seeing can really see the font really quickly. Um, well, and, and I like that, that you did what I do because in order to make it novels and all that stuff, you have to have so many words in it. Yeah. So you just have, Dave went to the store and, 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 and about 500 times and that gets your word count increased. So yeah, it's a good trick. <laughs> um, just so, kidding. Yeah. No, for those who want to learn a little bit more about Dave's, uh, David's uh, honorable mentions, but also some of his uh, recommendations for horror TV shows, the link is in the show notes, highly recommend it. And also if you want to pick up a copy of his book, Living Death, or his copy of his uh a copy of the three books in one highly recommend that as well the links are in the show notes so check it out you will not be missed it is always something you want to pick up right on halloween so david as always thank you so much for doing this thank you sir i appreciate it so with that as always i'm a little rusty at this so let's see if i can get through this one correctly Put down social media, put down Twitter, put down Facebook, put down Instagram, put down the ticky talky and go have a conversation with somebody. It helps our society, it helps our democracy and helps us be a better people at the end of the day. So with that, this has been the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown, YouTube exclusive horror TV shows. Have yourself an excellent day. Happy Halloween. Keep safe. Remember to check both ways while crossing the street tonight, kids. And remember, just keep talking.